Dear friends, welcome to our YouTube channel SRIP Edu Farm. In this video, I have explained the general principle of treatment of poisoning. I am Dr. Sanjay Gupta, Associate Professor in the Department of Pharmacology. Now, let's come to the topic. First, we should know what is poison, how it can be defined. So, a poison can be referred to any substance that is harmful or toxic to the body or any tissues or organ of the body. A number of products that we have around us can be poisonous, even water can be toxic if we take in excess. The medicines that are not taken as directed by the physician can also be harmful or toxic. So let me define poisoning. Poisoning is nothing but the effect of any poison or the effect produced in contact with any substance that results in toxicity. It is a serious and common medical emergency in any country. It generally occurs when any substance interferes with the normal body function after it is swallowed, inhaled or injected or absorbed. There are four roots of poisoning. First is inhalation in which poisoning can occur through inhalation of substances like aerosols, poisonous sprays, cleaning fluids etc. Second is injectables. Any injectable drugs can cause local toxicity or systemic poisoning. Third is injection. Injection of any poison like rat poison, cleaners, etc. They can produce toxicity. Fourth route is absorption. Like household cleaner, insecticides. These can be absorbed through skin and can produce toxicity. Most of the poisonings are dose dependent. That is if higher the dose then higher will be the toxicity toxicity may also results from exposure to excess amount of non toxic substances some poisoning results from exposure to substances that are poisonous at all doses now poisoning is different from hypersensitivity and idiosyncratic reactions as it is unpredictable and not dose related it is different from intolerance also as it is a toxic reaction to a usually non-toxic dose of a substance. Now come to know different types of poisoning. Poisoning is mainly classified into four types. First is deliberate or intentional poisoning. Second is accidental poisoning. Third is environmental poisoning. And fourth is poisoning caused due to the industrial exposure. In deliberate poisoning, examples can be as the people are poisoned by someone who intend to kill or disable them. The intention may be to rape or to rob the people. The drugs generally used to disable the people are scopolamine, benzodiazepines, gamma hydroxybutyrate, etc. As these drugs can induce sedation or amnesia or both. In deliberate poisoning, examples can be as the people are poisoned by someone who intend to kill or disable them. The intention may be to rape or to rob the people. The drugs generally used to disable the people are scopolamine, benzodiazepines, gamma hydroxybutyrate, etc. As these drugs can induce sedation or amnesia or both. Poisoning also seen among older children adolescents and adults who intend to suicide. In such cases, ingestion of multiple drugs including alcohol, acetaminophen and other OTC drugs may be involved. Accidental poisoning is most commonly seen in young children as they are curious to ingest items that have different taste and odors. Accidental poisoning also seen in elder people that occurs due to confusion, also poor eyesight, or mental impairment or by using multiple prescription of the same drug by different physicians. Now come to the different causes of poisoning. There are number of substances that may act as a poison and it can include clean products like phenyl detergent etc. Products like nail polish remover or other personal care products pesticides that are used to kill pests at home, metals such as lead, mercury which can be found in old thermometer and batteries, prescription and over-the-counter drugs when combined or taken in the wrong procedure, contaminated foods, 
may also cause poisoning. Plants like ivy and poison oak are poisonous. Snake bite venom may also cause poisoning. Here I have mentioned some common symptoms of poisoning like vomiting, diarrhea, nausea, redness or sore around the mouth, drooling or dry mouth, dilated pupils or constricted pupils, rashes, confusion, shaking or seizure and trouble in breathing. Now let us know the different procedures that are used in the management of poisoning. The holistic management of toxic exposure should include the following considerations based on a risk assessment approaches are resuscitation and stabilization, diagnosis of toxicity, therapeutic interventions like decontamination, enhanced elimination of poisonous substances or using antidotes for specific poisons. Also we can use intravenous supportive cares in some cases to remove the poisonous substances from the body. So I will explain one by one now. First is resuscitation and stabilization. Under this first priorities are given to three things that is airway, breathing and circulation. These things we are denoting by A, B, C. A is for airway, B is breathing and C is circulation. Now second vital signs like pulse and hypoglycemia must be corrected. Third is if the patient is unresponsive, they can be treated with coma cocktail. This includes oxygen, naloxone, dextrose that is 50W and thiamine that is 100mg. 50ml of D50W for adults and 1 gram per kg glucose for children. Thiamine not usually given to the children. Next is toxicological diagnosis. It includes history of patient and examination of toxic signs and symptoms. History of patient is important to obtain maximum detail about exposure that is number of exposed person, type of exposure, amount of dose taken or route by which the poisoning occurred etc. Also the intention of the patient is identified. Under the examination Patients are undressed completely for thorough examination. Their clothing are checked for identification if any object or poisonous substances is there. It includes general assessment of any toxic appearance in the patient. Skin are also examined for any toxic signs like brushing, cyanosis, flushings, etc. Assessment of A, B, C, D, E like airway, breathing, circulation, disability and exposure are diagnosed for the examination of poisoning. Another method is gastric emptying. Emesis is induced in patients by using syrup of epicac and its dose is 15 ml for 1 to 12 year and 30 ml for adults and it can be repeated if the emesis not occur in 12 hours. Using this, around 90% of the patients vomits within 20 minutes of first dose. Usually, 3 to 5 episodes of emesis is required to resolve in 2 hours. If protected, emesis occurs considered toxin as etiology. Other method for gastric emptying is the use of orogastric levis. It is done by using the size of 36 to 40 French tube for adults and size of 22 to 24 French tube in children. Length of insertion is measured from chin to zipoid and confirm it with air insufflation to avoid insertion in trachea. This tube is then levels with water at room temperature until it runs clear. Charcoal can also be given before withdrawal of the tube that helps to adsorb the toxic substances in the gut. Next is toxin absorption in gut. For these different methods can be used like use of activated charcoal or multiple dose activated charcoal or cathartics or whole bowel irrigation. 
Now let me detail individually. Activated charcoal is most appropriate substance to decontaminate gastrointestinal tract. It helps to absorb toxins in gut lumen and is safe to use and cheap also. The dose of this activated charcoal is 1 gram per kg. Next is multi-dose activated charcoal. It is indicated in several cases as if there is ingestion of large doses of poisonous substances or if slow release of toxins is present or in case of toxins that slow gut functions or toxins with enterohepatic or enteroentric circulation. The repeat dose of this activated charcoal is 0.25 to 0.5 gram per kg. Next method is use of cathartics. Osmotic cathartics are generally given with activated charcoal. There are number of cathartics available. For example, 70% sorbitol, 10% magnesium citrate. These cathartics have shown to reduce the transit time of the activated charcoal. They itself do not limit the toxin bioavailability or changes in patient outcome. However, they only reduces the transit time of the activated charcoal so that more and more poison can be adsorbed into the charcoal. Another method in the management of poisoning is enhanced elimination method. In this, the elimination rate of the poisonous substance is to be increased. It can be done by using three different methods that is first alkalinization second is forced diuresis and the last is hemodialysis or hemoperfusion. Now come to the alkalinization. In this method some alkalis are used to nullify the effect of some poison or some substance like 2,4-D that is one herbicide, phenobarbital, chlorpropamide, salicylates, methanol etc. Alkalinization can be achieved by intravenous dose of bicarbonates at 1 to 2 milli equivalent per kg followed by intermittent bolus or continuous bicarbonate drip for urine till the pH 7.5 or 8.0 is obtained. Next is hemodialysis or hemoperfusion. It is another method to remove toxins from the blood. Dialysis is employed for some specific toxins including salicylates, methanol, ethylene glycol, lithium, theophylline, etc. It helps to remove toxins that already absorbed by gut and come in systemic circulation and have ability to remove parent as well as active metabolite. However, this method can be less useful when the toxins has large volume of distribution as it can easily and rapidly affect the organs. Also, if the toxins have large molecular weight or highly protein bound, this method is less effective. Now let me tell you the different methods of prevention from poisoning that commonly occurs in patients. Like, person should only take the prescription medication that are prescribed by a physician or healthcare professionals. Do not take large or more frequent doses of the medication especially to relieve from pain rapidly or powerfully because overdose may cause prescription drug should poisoning. never be shared or sell to another person. Always follow the direction of uses mentioned on the level of the medication. Medicines always to be kept on their original packaging bottles or containers do not change the packaging of the medicine. Also monitor the use of medicine prescribed for children and teenagers. So by using these methods we can prevent from the poisoning. Thank you for watching this video. Hope it will be helpful to know about the poison and its management.